Gwen. Yes. Give us a Waltuco race report. Um, it was hot. It was super hot. So we got there on Monday and we wanted like five days to, to heat prep and it, it was hot. I mean, I'm back in Boulder right now and I just swam in water that was 83 degrees and I felt like it was an ice box and it's 70 something outside today, Pat, and I'm cold. So, um, it, it, it was hot there. Um, like do you know what it was in Fahrenheit? I mean, every day it was 90, 92, and, and you know, 70% humidity. So, I mean, Yeah, and it then was... the water was hot as well. I think the water was, they said like 31, 32 degrees Celsius. So that's as well 90-ish. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was actually so hot that it was on the borderline of being canceled. So uh, there's a WGBT reading, a wet bulb, wet globe bulb. WB, uh, some... Wet bulb. Uh, I don't know. Reading, or if it's above 32.2, uh, the race has to be canceled uh, because it's too hot. And it was exactly 32.2. Yeah, I mean, so. Like, do you want me to just walk through the I week? think go through the whole week, yeah. I mean, so I think, you know, mon you know, the reality is we have to get there. It's kind of a, it's not that far away, but it is kind of a pain to get there from Denver. Yeah, we had to overnight. So we flew from Denver to Mexico City, and then you have to overnight. So we did an airport airport hotel, and then flew to Waltuco the next day. Had a good Monday. Tuesday, I had some issues on my run in the afternoon where I had to stop to go to the bathroom a few times. I came home. Pat was like, oh, it's just the heat. You're fine. Went to bed, and in the middle of the night, woke up six times to go to the bathroom. How many times did I go at breakfast then that morning? <laughs> A lot. Yeah. And if you know me, like I eat really quick. So I was at breakfast. I was probably in the bathroom more than I was at breakfast. And at that point we knew something was wrong. And so I um, ended up calling it a day and I ended up taking three naps that day. Didn't train at all. I remember at one point somebody asked me to feed George and I was like, I just can't. I need to rest. So I had um, a little bit of a problem, but thankfully I, I you know, I, I really needed an Imodium sponsor because... I took it every single day, um, including both race days, just to, to make uh, to make it through. So um, it was pretty rough after that. I remember on Wednesday, I sent a couple email panic emails out. I asked Jamie, I said, you know, do I just call the race? Like, I do not want to go into the, this race if I'm not going to be able to perform. Like, I, I just don't want to start a race that I know I can't perform. And he gave me the advice to seek out nutritionists and physio physiologists' advice, and I emailed them. And... I got a response back with a bunch of stuff to do, and then it said you have adequate time. So for me, that that really gave me hope and and, and kept it alive to to make it through race day. So yeah, then the day before the race, they told us that the heat was so hot that they might have to cancel it or delay it. So um, that was for me. I was almost hoping for a delay to give my stomach one more day because I wasn't quite right yet. But uh, yeah, the race ended up happening as is, and. Um, yeah, I, I ended up in second place. Walks through the swim. So, t but, but but first, I think it's important to understand. I mean, you're still getting called up last for these races, which is you know different. You, than no, it was wild actually. I think there was like six people behind me this time. So this was the first okay. race where I actually had like a choice of where I could stand. But yes, but but yeah, fifty two spots were chosen before you could go out there. Yes, yeah, so it was. Um, you know. It, it, yeah, I just, I don't have a, I don't get to pick at all where I'm going to start and I just go out there and whatever spots are left, I go to and I, um, you know, everyone kind of went right for the race. So I was on the far left and the, the race start, I've had some poor beach starts this year and this year, this race in Waltuco, I, I think I had a pretty decent start. I haven't watched the race yet. But I, I felt very ready to go when the gun went off and um, felt like I was in it. And the swim, yeah, the swim, I actually, I didn't know where I was. I felt like I was way far behind and I actually spent a lot of the swim. I remember just, I, I backed myself and just said, just swim solo. Don't get on any feet to the first can. Did that, got to the first can and still felt like I could swim around people. So I took the wide line around all the buoys just to get some space to kind of swim through people. 
and then there was so there was five buoys and then there was uh this last yellow buoy that we had to go around uh, on our left shoulder all the other ones were on our right shoulder and i went around it and something happened and i got pinned under it was actually quite scary i just couldn't come up it felt like there was six or seven people that kind of swam on top of me at this point and i just at that point wanted to get air so I tried to remain calm. I knew that eventually I would be able to pop up and get air and I did. And then once I did, I, um, you know, full speed to the exit and ended up coming out in, in 10th, I think in the water. Yes. Yeah. I think I was it was right, ninth, ninth or 10th. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I was standing at the probably 50 meters past the swim exit and, you know, I was just looking and I do like a little soft count with my hands and I was not, I did not use two hands yet. You know, I was using, I wasn't through my second hand and all of a sudden I see you spring up out of the water and I said, oh, geez, you know, this is a great swim for Gwen. Um, yeah, it was hot though. And I remember I ran out of the water and they, um, you know, the brace was so hot. They did have lots of water, lots of ice and there's in triathlon, there's a, littering zone rule where you can only get rid of water and fluids and nutrition in certain zones but they got rid of that rule for this race just to allow us to drink and hydrate as much as we needed so we copped out of the swim and they were they were handing out waters and it was just this bad timing where the three people in front of me all got waters and they were trying to, the volunteers were grabbing new waters to give and so I missed the water and I remember I really wanted one because I was super hot uh, but there was no time for that. Got to transition, hopped on the bike, and a uh, front group of maybe 10 of us formed, kind of. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just extremely hot. There was this little rise in the course, not really a hill, but a little bump that just kind of kept it entertaining. Four laps on the bike, and eventually our all the bike groups just kind of came together. And it was interesting. I had two bottles on my bike that were 24 ounces. Yes, Pat? I think they were 26. 26 actually. ounces. And anyway, I remember before the race, Pat's like, you don't need this much. I was like, I need this much. And on lap three of the bike, I was out of all my fluids. And lap four was brutal for me, just having no fluid. I was really, really hot, wishing I had more to drink. And I think that led into me being super hot on the first lap of the run. Before we get to the run, can we talk about the transformation of the bike course from being like real roads, you know, throughout the week and what they looked like to... I thought the course looked amazing come race day on Saturday, but how did it feel from when you were training on it during the week to then once it became fully closed on Saturday? Yeah, during the week when I trained on the course, there was a lot of potholes, a lot of glass, tons of glass, a lot of sand, and um, come race day, they had filled a lot of the potholes and they had swept the course, so I felt like it was, um, you know, I don't, did anyone even get a puncture in the individual race? Not that I saw. Yeah, I think they did a great job of getting rid of all the glass. There was still a little sand and some bumps, um, a little rough section coming into transition, but it was, I thought it was great. They did an ex excellent job. Cool. All right, talk to us about the run. Well, transition was, I had a bad transition. I dropped my sunglasses. I had to come back for them. I just feel like every race I'm working out these kinks. But I guess it's been a long time since I've raced. But yeah, the run, I got out and I was super hot from that last lap of the bike. And I just, every water that was available, I would take two or three. I'd drink some, I'd dump them on me, take the ice, put it down my suit. It was just, it was hot. And the first lap of the run felt hard. And a lot of people flew by me, flew by me. Like, I saw three or four people just pass me. And I was like, man, I can't, I can't go that speed right now. And I also, I think I was a little... Cautious. I've had some pretty poor performances in the heat, and um, for me, I, I was like, okay, I just I need to not blow up, basically. So the first lap, I maybe was a little overcautious, but I was also really hot. And then the second lap, I actually didn't feel the heat as much and was able to pick it up. And um, I think my second lap was probably a pretty big outlier compared to everyone else's as well. And I was just able to keep picking people off. Um, yeah. I mean, I know, yeah. I mean, when you came by me at like what was probably four or 500 meters into the run up the hill the first time and you were in like the 20s and you looked horrible, rough. I, I mean, was so hot. Yeah, it was crazy. And so I and think. And how did I look going up the hill the second time when you saw me? 
No, I mean, I, th I was getting messages because people were watching the race that they said they were, you know, after lap one, you still weren't even in the top 10. They're like, dude, what's going on? And I was like, uh, truthfully, I have no clue. So <laughs> I was like, you know, might work out well. It might not. I, I don't, I don't know. Um, and so, you know, that was interesting. But then all of a sudden, you know, you came up, you were, a, by the time you came up the hill the second time, you were really making ground and you were probably yeah. only, I don't know, eight or nine seconds away from what was the group for second. Yeah. And then everybody started texting me that like Gwen looks like she's flying you know and then you know it seemed like the rest of the of the you know I did look at the the pace or this this run split because you had asked me um if I slowed down and I actually the second it was basically my first lap and second lap were about the same time so I don't know if everyone else just slowed down immensely uh I, I know you said I looked better and I did feel better the second lap, but uh you know I think I, I definitely had the least uh I'm looking for a word blow up as yeah. 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 But I think it's fair to say that even, you know, it, had T two gone your way, I mean first place wasn't really gonna be on the cards for you. Uh yeah, I mean first place was she was flying. Right. Um absolutely fine and you know for me to run at that speed. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, t I told you this, Pat, like you asked me if I was happy with the race and I said, yeah, I think, you know, I, I, every, that I think second place is the best I was going to do on that day, considering everything mm -hmm. that was going on. Yep. Cool. I love to race in a non-hot race, but yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Well, speaking of races, uh, what is your next race? Hmm. It's left in the hands of USA triathlon and world triathlon. If you guys would like to see me race, encourage them. Perfect. I mean, I, what am I signed up for? I'm on the wait list for Montreal, but that's that's this weekend, and I haven't rolled on, so I'm probably not going there. Um, and then uh, the next two races, there's like Long Beach, which is a Connie Cup, which I'm signed up for, and the same weekend is Hamburg. So depending on if I get into Hamburg or not, I'll go to Long Beach. And then... Um, Am I missing any other races? That's kind of it, right? Yeah, for now, I think that's kind of the... Yeah, we just wait and see. Yeah. You know, I'm, I think I'm pretty flexible right now. You qualified for Pan Am Games this weekend. I did qualify for Pan Am Games this weekend, and we did the mixed team relay, which was amazing. It was super fun. It was actually, um, there was no points, no money, anything like that, but it was really, really fun to get out there and do the relay. Uh, had a, you know... You know, I felt like it was a decent swim, a really something happened in the runout that wasn't great. And um, I put myself in a position where I had to bridge up on the bike, but was able to do that and come away uh, with the win for Team USA. The Dar, Brents, Katie really set us up great for, for the win there, which was pretty fun. Cool. Um, yeah, and a little fun point of fact for everybody. A little tech info. You raced on different wheels in the, the mixed team relay, so we used your... We were debating. We brought two sets of race wheels to the race. Uh, right, because the course was a little rough, and we didn't know what to race on. Yeah. So on on Sunday on Saturday you raced with thirty mil tires, pumped up to about sixty psi, and on Sunday you raced uh, with ultimately really the same the same depth of head wheel. You had like a sixty mil wheel, but you raced on thirty two mil tires. But at less pressure. rain pressure at about 50 psi. Yeah, I remember feeling my wheels and just being like, Pat, I called them. Because uh, I was like, this does not feel right. I think I need to pump them up. But um, we did it. Did and the bike feel smoother on the rough roads? Or do you think? What, I, you don't, I don't notice anything when I'm racing. Well, that's not true. I do if it's horrible. So um, yeah. it wasn't horrible because I didn't notice anything. Okay. All right. So I won't bore anybody else with the, with the tech specs. Um, okay. Well. Yeah, people say they don't like these interview anyway so we can end it perfect yeah because it wouldn't have any b-roll sorry <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have kenny or talbot with us and i'm not going to walk around with a gopro <laughs> we got six people traveling with us we don't need a seven yeah exactly All okay right. bye